this video we're talking about partial fractions and how to use partial fractions to evaluate an integral. And in this particular problem we're going to be dealing with distinct linear factors and we call it distinct linear factors because when you look at the denominator you have three linear factors x, x plus 2, and x minus 1. So those are the three linear factors. We call them linear because they all involve x to the first power. So this is x to the first, this is x to the first power plus 2, this is x to the first power minus 1. When you have x to the first power, it's a linear factor, and we call them distinct because they aren't equal to each other. So a factor of x is not the same as a factor of x plus 2, which is not the same as a factor of x minus 1. This is the easiest kind of partial fractions problem, distinct linear factors, because linear factors are easier to handle than quadratic factors, and distinct factors are easier to handle than repeated factors. So when you have distinct linear factors, this is how you do the partial fractions decomposition. You're going to keep the original function, the original fraction here, exactly as is on the left-hand side. So we're going to say 4x squared minus 3x minus 4 divided by the original denominator x times x plus 2 times x minus 1. We're going to set that equal to and we're going to give each factor its own fraction. So this x is going to be in one fraction, then we're going to put the x plus 2 in the next fraction and the x minus 1 in the next fraction. And then when you have linear factors, the numerators are just a single constant. So a, and then because we already used a, we'll use b, and then because we've already used a and b, we'll use c. This right-hand side is what we're going to use to replace the original fraction here. So we're actually going to end up integrating this instead of the original fraction. All we have to do before we get to that step is find values for a, b, and c. So how do we go about finding those values for the constants a, b, and c? Well, we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by the denominator from the left-hand side. So we're going to multiply everything by x times x plus 2 times x minus 1. When we do that, we're going to get the denominator from the left-hand side to go away completely. That'll cancel with this value. So we're left with 4x squared minus 3x minus 4. And then on the right hand side, this x here will cancel with this x, leaving us with just x plus 2 times x minus 1. So we'll get a times quantity x plus 2 times quantity x minus 1. For this fraction here involving b, we'll get the x plus 2 to cancel with this x plus 2, leaving us with just x and x minus 1. So we'll say plus b times x times quantity x minus 1. And then for our last fraction involving c, we'll get the x minus 1 to cancel with this x minus 1, leaving us with just c times x times x plus 2. Now what we want to do is go ahead and expand the right-hand side. We'll leave the left-hand side alone for right now. On the left-hand side here, we're going to get a times quantity x plus 2 times quantity x minus 1 is going to give us x squared minus x plus 2x, or just plus x, and then minus 2. Here we're going to get bx squared minus bx when we distribute the bx across the x minus 1. And then here we're going to get cx squared plus 2cx. Lastly, we'll distribute the a across the quantity x squared plus x minus 2. And so we'll get ax squared plus ax minus 2a, and the rest will be the same. Now we want to group together like terms. So again, we'll leave the left-hand side as is for right now. On the right-hand side, we want to put all of our x squared terms together. So that's going to look like ax squared plus bx squared plus cx squared. That's going to cover this term, this term, and this term. Then we want to put all of our first-degree x terms together. So we'll put these in parentheses here. Then we'll say plus ax minus bx plus 2cx. So that's going to cover this, this, and this. And then lastly, we'll put all of our constants together. So we're going to end up with a minus 2a, and that'll cover the last term there. Next, we'll factor out the x variable from each of these sets here of parentheses. So again, we leave the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we'll pull out an x squared. So that'll just leave us with quantity a plus b plus c when we factor an x squared out of ax squared plus bx squared plus cx squared. And then here we'll factor out an x, so we'll be left with a minus b plus 2c, and then we pull that x out, and then we have the minus 2a. 
Now the reason that we do it like this is because we want to equate coefficients from the left and the right hand side of the equal sign. So what you can do is draw boxes around these coefficients to make it even more clear for yourself. So what we see is that the coefficient on the x squared term on the right hand side is this a plus b plus c that we created. The coefficient on x squared on the left hand side is this value here, 4. So what we're going to be able to do is say 4 is equal to a plus b plus c. We can also say that a minus b plus 2c is going to be equal to negative 3 because those are the coefficients on the first degree x variable. And then lastly, the constants, we're going to be able to say negative 2a is going to be equal to negative 4 since those are the constants on each side. So we want to set up those equations, 4 equals a plus b plus c, negative 3 is equal to a minus b plus 2c, and then a negative 4 is equal to negative 2a. Well, the easiest one to solve, obviously, is this negative 4 equals negative 2a. So we'll divide both sides by negative 2, and we'll get positive 2 is equal to a. So a is equal to 2. We'll put that up here and then give ourselves more room. So if a is equal to 2, what we can say then when we plug a equals 2 into both these equations is instead of 4 equals a plus b plus c, we'll get 4 equals 2 plus b plus c. If we subtract 2 from both sides, then we'll end up with 2 is equal to b plus c. Same thing here with this equation, we'll get negative 3 equals 2 minus b plus 2c. If we subtract 2 from both sides, we're going to get negative 3 minus 2 is a negative 5 equals negative b plus 2c. Now what we can do is add these equations together, because if we add them together, we're going to get b plus a negative b, which is 0. So 2 minus 5, or 2 plus a negative 5, gives us a negative 3, equals c plus 2c gives us 3c. Then if you divide both sides by 3, you get c is equal to negative 1. Now if we take that value for c and we plug it back into this first equation here, Instead of 2 equals b plus c, we get 2 equals b minus 1. And then if we add 1 to both sides, we get b is equal to 3. So now we have the values a equal 2, b equal 3, and c equal negative 1. We're going to be taking this original partial fractions decomposition, this right-hand side that we found here, and we're going to be plugging that in for the original fraction that we started with. So we're going to be replacing this original fraction with the partial fractions decomposition, except that instead of a, b, and c, we're going to have 2, 3, and negative 1. So instead of taking the integral of this original fraction, we're going to say the integral of 2 over x plus 3 over x plus 2, and then we have a negative 1, so minus 1 over x minus 1 d x. And since we know that the integral of 1 over x is equal to natural log of the absolute value of x plus c, we can go ahead and say then that our integral is 2, we take this from the numerator, times, now we have 2 times 1 over x, so 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of x. Here we're going to have plus 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2. And here we're going to have minus 1, so minus natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1. And then we add c to account for our constant of integration. And that's how you use partial fractions to evaluate an integral that has distinct linear factors. Could you use some extra help with math? Click the button to head over to calculusexpert.com. It's where I've collected and organized all of my best resources, including exclusive videos, notes, quizzes, and even formula sheets. It's the perfect resource whether you're struggling, or if you want to take your learning further, or even if you just want to save yourself some time studying. So check it out, because I know it'll help.